want to start with that's even good like if you just want to do like a visual thing we're not even looking and just seeing a screen and some music that sounds you know it's spectacular too so i'm open to all of it yeah, if you got a playlist we should definitely use your playlist okay um, unless you prefer not having to deal with it then we can totally do it mm -mm. okay <sighs> People get impatient. They come in the waiting room and they leave. <laughs> Not ready yet. Behind always shows up and waits though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have shea butter. Yeah. I'm gonna start with a little magic trick with some shea butter. So if you wanna get some and have it close by, um, I ask everyone else to kind of run out and get theirs, but that's what we'll start with. We'll start with a little shea butter activation. <laughs> that's, that's how I started my morning. <laughs> Good, yeah. Now, can I use coconut oil or should I go get some type of shea butter? Uh, shea butter is better. Um, it's got that girth, oh, you know, you need that, that okay. thickness. So shea butter works better. Coconut oil is a good substitute if you don't have it. But if you have some, go get the shea butter. Six to three. <laughs> so we'll see when it shows back up. Mm -hmm. Did you, Gata Samina, did you figure out the music? Oh, yes. Sorry, let me get this going. And I'll let folks in. Okay. <laughs>
right, yes, let's get started. I was thinking we were waiting for a couple other people. So, hey, y'all. <laughs> um, happy new moon. Happy Monday. Happy new week. What's up? Welcome. Yes. I am Amina. For some of us, I see some new faces and some old faces and some familiar faces. So I just want to um, introduce myself. I'm Amina Peterson, goddess Amina, Devi Amina, however you feel comfortable. Uh, she, her pronouns. And I am currently in Hawaii um, on the island of Oahu, on the land of the Kanaka Maoli Hawaiian people. And I am excited to, to be on this journey of decolonization with you. Um, that was my jam. So we get to, the question was posed, should we start with some music? And I thought, yeah. So if you didn't Shazam it and you aren't familiar, that is I Am Love from, oh, that was I Am Love from Marty Nico. Um, it's one of the remixes. There's like a thousand remixes of that song. It's a popular um, song at festivals. We are going to talk a little bit today about the body as a sex organ. Um, and before we do that, though, I would like to do a little uh, shea butter activation. So if you have some shea butter, run and grab it. If you don't have some shea butter, grab some coconut oil or some stiff, um, a stiff oil, coconut oil, depending on where you are, maybe liquid by now, but something heavier, maybe a judgeable oil or even a vitamin E oil. Uh, I'm going to show you a little magic trick. Yeah, so just get a little bit. You got the big jaw. That's the real big shape. Jaw. Yes. Yeah, the whole body. Yes. This is how we're going to start. Some of you have done this with me before. So I want you to get a good amount, like maybe a little half a teaspoon. I'm going about that much, right? Good amount. And I want you to put it in the palm of your left hand. I would like for you to hold your left hand out and close your eyes, if you will, and just um, feel what it feels like to have that in the palm of your left hand. That it's really helpful when it's stiff. So even if you come back to do this practice again later, go buy some shea butter, find some from a friend, do this with a friend that has some, and just hold it there in the left hand receiving the energy from it. Feel what it feels like as it gets softer and softer in your hand, acclimating to you, acclimating to your body. And then you can open your eyes and bring the right hand to meet it. And just hold it there in prayer hands and feel the shea butter begin to melt a little more rapidly. Feel it as it gets softer and, and your hands kind of come together a little bit more with each moment. And then twisting your hands, slowly begin to help it melt. Just circling around in the palm of your hand though first. Just letting it get real gushy. Feel how it starts to spread out into your hands and just try not to focus on anything else except for that. And the feeling of it getting a little sloppy, a little messy. How it's kind of moving up into your fingertips now as it spreads. Maybe making your circles even bigger, covering all of your fingertips. And just enjoy the sensation of the wetness in your hands, of the glide, the slipperiness. Then move it between your fingers. Real slowly. If you can, slow down a little bit more. And then wrapping it around the back of your hand. And just allow your hands to play with each other. And feel all of that shea butter goodness just soak into the skin, 
and offer you an opportunity to be sensual with yourself. Gliding, stroking, feeling. Play with pressure and with speed. Feel how different it feels when you slow all the way down to a near stop. compared to when you speed it up. Breathing into your hands, drawing in the nutrients from the butter. Inviting your wrists. listening to the sound your hands are making as it squishes through gelatinous feel of shea butter on the hand. Taking the smell of the raw nut. Find one spot that feels good and give it more attention than the rest. Slowly, intentionally. Imagine that shea butter moving all the way down your arms, but you're just at your hands, but feel the shea butter moving down further and feel the sensation in your hand as you rub on it. And feel that sensation expanding into the body. Even though you're just touching your hands, if you can't feel it, slow it down a little more. Maybe even a little more. What does that feel like in the body? What are you recognizing? And then you can Begin to find a little stillness in the middle. We're bringing your hands to prayer hands. Eat your mute your mic. And just taking the sensation of energy moving around your hands, see what's tingling, what's buzzing what lies underneath. Separating the palms from each other. Open your palms up towards the ceiling, towards the earth, uh, towards the heavens, excuse me. See what you feel on the palms of your hands on the fats of your fingertips, pay attention. And then look at them, look at them glistening and shiny. And what are you seeing? Look at the lines in your hands. Around the nail beds. Does it look familiar? And then balling them up into fist.
And taking the shea butter that's excess, rubbing it wherever you want. It's all nice and ready for you now. Get glistening. All right. So a lot of times we forget how divine the body is our hands when we use every day we really ask a lot of them and we don't turn back to them but it's interesting because we use our hands so much in sex like it's pretty i think well understood even if not well communicated that our hands are definitely a part of our sexual engine right but our entire body is like that and a lot of what we know from socialization, from practice, from porn, from TV, um, from locker room talk is that sex looks a certain way. And often um, it's a certain thing we do a certain progressive thing we do, the linear thing that we do to get to sex. And then the sex happens and then it ends when something else happens. And so today, one of the things that I'm going to work with you on, we're gonna to work together on is reframing what we think of sex, seeing it as a act of embodiment, um, an act of divination and an act of transmutation. So I want to start with getting a working definition, something we can all agree on. What is sex? So if we can go around the room, that would be helpful for me. Or we can do a popcorn style and whoever wants to go, go, since I think everyone's screen actually looks differently on Zoom. Um, Let's see, I think I can just let whoever wants to go first go and then I'll call on who's next. Okay, Sophia. What is sex um, to you? What, is, what does it mean to you? How do we define sex in this space today? Um, I'll jump in. Okay. Um, I think Broadly, I actually do think of it as a state of embodiment, but then I get confused because when I actually think about like the actions, it's a lot of what you say, like it's very much informed by um, the culture that I come from to think of it in a very linear, progressive kind of way leading up to um, like orgasm of one or both people. And generally speaking, starting with like arousal and then going into like just again progressing um in my mind there's a very linear way that it looks but when i think about sex that's not what i think about i think about embodiment okay all right how would you like it to look <laughs> much different than it currently looks <laughs> I will come back to you. Think about that one for a little bit and I would love to come back to you and we'll, we'll dive deeper into that. Who else? How else will we define sex in this space? Coach K. <laughs> I was trying to let the other people go. <laughs> um, sex to me is... Um, is the promise of pleasure. That's how I add. Um, it's the promise that I'll be present in the body and fulfilled. I guess that's good sex. I guess that, that's great sex. <laughs> Should we but call, least, can we come up with another name for bad sex? Can we call it something else other than sex? Does that feel good? Yeah. 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 yeah, let's call bad sex. Let's not put bad and sex together. Let's I try not to. I call. Yeah. I, I just say we were just incompatible. I try not to call it bad. Just we connected mm. once. 
we did that thing one time and it don't work no more. <laughs> but was it even connection, right? We attempted to connect one. Here we Ooh, go. I like, I like that. that. Okay. So we're not going to use the word we bad won't. sex. We can go with that. Don't chime that in either. We won't use yeah, the but, term bad sex in this space. We'll say we attempted to connect. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this, it's the promise of pleasure for me. The promise that I'll be present in the body and absent from the mind. Okay. Well, so, go ahead. Um, sex to me is creation, but not necessarily procreation. You know, people can get that mixed up. Um, yeah, yeah. As Coach said, um, pleasure. Um, focus while losing yourself, but not falling, but purposely losing yourself. Let yourself just, that's not a word, but that (laughs) blossom, glow, grow. Yes. All of it. All the goodness. Yes. I like it. I like it. All right. Um, who else? Thank you, Denisha. Thank you. Hey, since you're off mute, who, go ahead and give us some, some goodness. April, did you want to say something? Sophia, how will you define sex or help us define sex for this space today? Oh, we don't hear you. Yeah, we don't hear you. I don't know what's what's happening. We can't get you. It's okay. Look at she look like you ready. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I'll I'll add when it's when it's play when it feels like improvisational play. And there's like that same, the kid spirit, that play spirit that's in all play is present. Mm-hmm. That's a nice quality. I don't know how to define it or like put words to it around the laughter, the, un- the uncertainty. I like that. Okay, thank you. Deidre, I saw you come off the mic. Yeah, um, I guess for me, it's like opening my heart to like deep uh, possibility um, and also to, yeah, deep connection um, for like creative flow um, for like... Uh, did we lose you? Oh, we lost you. Creative flow. That's where we lost you at. Okay. If you have something more to add, Deidre, let me know. Okay. It's, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Just like stress relief, I was saying. Oh, um, stress relief. Okay. Okay, cool. Who else got something good from me? Go ahead, E. 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 Hey, Amina. It's Eden. Hey, Eden. <laughs> Hi. Go for a minute. Actually, no, I'm not because my arm hurts. Um, so sex for me is about acceptance. Okay. I like that. Thank you. Anyone else? Christiana, you just joined us. With the koolaws in your photo down there. Um, sex is spiritual. I see you, Sophia. I see your, your answer. You can also type it. Jean, you came off mute. Did you have something you wanted to add to? 
the question is, we're, we're just looking for a way to define. Oh, go ahead, Sharon. I didn't see your hand up. We got you. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I was going to type it. Okay. I was going to say um, it's a... It, it can be, it's a pleasurable sensation in the body that may or may not lead to orgasm. Okay. So I'm going to write sensation. We got pleasure on there. So pleasurable sensations, positive sensations. Um, okay. Creativity. Creative sex. The tool I use, these are coming up in the chat. I see there's more answers there, okay. Um, the way of communicating, there we go. Com communicating connection without words. So it's a form of communication. All right, cool. And it's magic. God damn right, it's magic. All right, cool, magic. Um, a tool to help experience different things. So sex as a tool. All right, and magical manifestation. I think that's a good, I'm, you know, throwing this stuff up on my little cheat sheet here so that we can look at the deepest soul connection. Who are you, secret Zoom user with these powerful words? <laughs> um, yes, it is a deep soul connection. I like that. Okay, cool. So we got to start. Yes, fun and playful. Now y'all got all, okay, open into the senses. All right, now the outpouring. Now y'all know what sex is. You've woken up. <laughs> you got it. Okay, we've had, we have had the sex before. Um, opening to the senses. I like that. Connection. Okay, cool. Thank you for all of these answers. Um, I asked this question and I love that, Sophia. Please do feel free to continue to play with your hands for the next couple of hours. They, they just keep going back to that. You can, I enjoy watching people rub themselves in my classroom. So it's not a lot of spaces where we could be safe just to kind of rub on stuff. So go ahead and feel free to, without worrying, you know, distracting. You won't, you, it won't matter here. We're all, we're all getting ready to actually move down the rabbit hole of sex. I would, um, I like to expand the definition. So that's what we started with. We're just starting with understanding for, for clarity, what our working definition of sex. And what I noticed when everybody was talking about what sex is that nobody brought up the genitals. There was no talk about playing and not even really a whole lot of talk about tasting. Um, although there was an opening to the senses, so there's some touch, feel, smell, taste here available. But there's not, when, whenever I ask this question, what is sex? No one actually goes to the genitals. It's interesting. Um, it's interesting for a number of reasons, but we can, we can explore that. So much of what we know about sex, though, when we start thinking about it and talking about it as a collective, like what, how are we going to do the sex, we end up in a different space, which, we, which is interesting. So we'll, we'll get to that, though. Um, I want to redefine what sex is supposed to look like, looking beyond the genitals and witnessing the body as a sex organ. And this is important to me for a lot of reasons, but one, um, well, we'll start with three three reasons, and this is what, um, what I believe sex to be for. And so when we look at sex, we look at our definition of sex and all of these delicious things, I think of why do we do the sex, right? Why do we have sex? And creation is one there. Procreation can be underneath that, um, but what else? And so for me, there's three things and you can write this down and draw some lines and squiggly notes to it. Oh, hold on, let me plug in the battery. Oops. Okay. Um, the first is divination. That sex is a tool for divination. Sex is embodied. I mean, second is embodiment and sex is a tool for embodiment. And the third is that sex is a tool for transmutation. 
So we have three. We have divination, embodiment, and transmutation. And when you look at what we came up with already, then we can start to kind of have an idea of how to move forward in this discussion about sex and moving into our bodies a little bit deep, deeper. To start looking at the things that we talked about, the promise of pleasure and presence, creation, focus, um, focus and getting, I did, I left out a word. Alicia, what was your second? You said focus and getting something. Playfulness, uncertainty, all of these words really, I can draw a line to those three. So if you start thinking about what goes under what, well, divination is, is knowing. Divination is knowing and knowing is in connection, right? So we look at how we divine with the body or why we do it and what, what, what kind of comes under there. Jean said magic, right? So I'm gonna put that under divination, magical manifestation. Denisha said, I'm gonna put that under, um, under divination. Opening to the senses, I'm gonna put that under embodiment. Communication, that goes under all three. Because we communicate when we, do, we offer divination, we communicate when we're doing transmutation, we communicate when we're um, practicing embodiment. In fact, I'm gonna put magic under transmutation also. Sex is spiritual, it's a spiritual experience. Let's put that under all three. Spiritual is all three. And I talk about this often because we are spiritual beings in this cool little space cowboy suit we're wearing here. And oftentimes we forget. Um, and so that embodiment piece is about feeling the spirit floating inside the body. In fact, let's just pause here for a moment and do another little quick exercise. Um, go ahead and uh, just close your mouth. Relax your jaw. If you need to help it. Just rub on it a little bit. And then press your tongue on the tip of your mouth and the roof just behind the teeth. And then let it fall gently in your mouth so that it's just floating suspended in air. Not touching the roof, not touching the palate on the bottom. And feel the sensation of your tongue floating in your mouth. Pay attention to the hollowness of the cavity of your mouth. How you can feel actual sensation all around the tongue right now. The tip, the bottom. Feel it expand in the mouth or sharpen and get tight depending on where your focus is. And imagine your soul, your spirit, like your tongue right now suspended inside of your body, not touching any of the walls, but they're floating internally. And then you can come back here. So when we look at spirituality, people are looking outside of themselves, oftentimes religious spirituality, where is God? And the sex is an opportunity to experience that it's here whatever you're looking for out there, right? It's just floating beneath the skin. So it's a spiritual experience we get to enjoy when we really start to think about it in that way. Um, acceptance, I'm gonna put that under embodiment. Playfulness, it's definitely going under embodiment. The promise of pleasure. Now that's going to go underneath embodiment and transmutation. And presence. I think we can slide that under um, embodiment and divination. Maybe even under transmutation. What do you guys think? You all think. And then think about what other things that you 
maybe thought and didn't say and where you would draw a line. Remember that exercise we did in like elementary school where you had to connect what went to what. So think about what, what other ways in which you are experiencing sex and how they fit in under these three main themes that I'm teaching from today. Creativity, procreation, that's transmutation. Stress really, that's embodiment, <laughs> right? Certain level of consciousness where we know something's in the body and needs, needs to be out, I need to let it go. Where do I put it? Um, and so, yeah, so what happens though is that if we try to put all the responsibility of this long, beautiful list onto our little bitty genitals, no offense for those of you that have really large ones. Mine is small and petite. <laughs> I kid. But if we try to put all this all this weight on this small part of our body, um, then what happens? How do we find ourselves um, disappointed in in ourselves and our sex? How are we let down in it? And what if we could kind of relieve some of the pressure? What if it did not have to fall on my clitoris? What if it could fall on my thighs? They're bigger, stronger, or my shoulders, these traps, right? What if I could hold it on the top of my head and my scalp and in my ears along the back of my neck? What if I knew that was where it was and I told somebody and when they came to approach me for sex, with that armed with that information, that they took their sweet, precious time making sure that I was able to serve as a witness to myself. What would that feel like for you if you were able to do that? And one of my messages, I, one, of, one of my students says, I'm, I'm new and too ashamed to say in the group that I'm scared and fear too much pleasure. And I would like for you to know that you're not alone. Pleasure is terrifying. And it's terrifying because we, well, for a lot of reasons, and I'll start with the main ones that I know of and that I witness in sex and sexual practices and sexual spaces. Um, or spaces where we shame sex and we run from it. What happens? Why are we so terrified of pleasure? One is a celebration of pain. It's a celebration of struggle. We have honored pain and struggle. We have honored hurt in a way that has been almost divine. Like we've lifted it up. We feel so much more comfortable getting hurt than getting pleasure. It's so much easier to talk about. We have a little embarrassment sometimes. I'm living this super pleasure-filled life. I don't want you to know. I know. A lot of us went through that in the last year. People who were having not so hard of times. Um, taking a lot of conversations offline where people were just like, I feel bad. Because I keep hearing about others struggling. And I don't want to say that I'm having a good time right now. I don't want to say that I'm that I'm finding peace right now. I just want to, I just want to be in pain too, almost. It was is a sense of what was like a communal understanding as to what we were gonna do. What we're we gonna do about this pain that we're feeling, or this joy that we're feeling while our neighbor feels pain. But pleasure is contagious. Right? It really is. Sensation is contagious. We are all empathic beings. People talk about being highly empathic or being empaths, but humans are empaths. A whole lot of us. The other option is sociopath, but <laughs> for the most part, here in this group, I think we can all we can all come to terms with the fact that we're all empathic, we're all empathetic, empathetic beings. So, um, and, and pleasure is contagious. Pleasure allows us to share. 
um, hmm. links and cons says we're moving towards a cosmology of trauma. Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can attest to that. So it's okay to acknowledge. In fact, I think it's very brave and proud, um, joyous to acknowledge that. Like, yes, I am a little scared of pleasure. We are also a little scared of sensation. So it's easier. I mean, very easy for us to make sex about this real little spot in the body, right? So I put my sex and bundle it up all in this thing. Then what happens is the rest of my body, that may be too much. I'll just leave it here. I can stop you here, control here. I can center my trauma here. I can center my negative experiences here. Everything happens here. Where does it go in the body? If, if we can get it out of that spot, how big can it get? So I want us to make sex bigger. I want to have bigger sex, bigger orgasms, bigger opportunities to transmute magical energy, bigger opportunities to create, to be playful, to feel sensation in the body, bigger opportunities to move trauma out of the body. And we can let go of this one little ideal that we have space where it's supposed to be. I will tell you a little story about my toes. So I was taking this class um, on a style of meditation taught in Vajrayana Tantra. And it's a, it's a sect of Buddhism. And my teacher was guiding us through the body. And I was going in this really deep, deep meditation that they usually, like, they usually work up to it. And I thought I had, but whatever. And um, we start in the toes. It's a very slow progression. We move through the toes and then you move through the rest of the body. But what happens is because you spend so much time in the toes, a lot of times people get lost there. And it was a really eye-opening experience to me about the way that we experience sex. That if I started my pussy, I'm going to, that's where it ends, right? I may even tap out when the sensation gets to be too much. So here's what happened. My teacher would guide us and say, all right, once we get all set up and breathe and sit in our position and draw your attention to your big toes. And so we'd focus on the big toes, like, yeah, there go my big toes. So you start feeling the outside of your toes and the tips of your toes and then the, the nail bed and the fat part underneath and maybe the bone underneath. And then you start going into where the bone connects into the foot. And right now, as I say this to you, because I've done this practice so much, my toes are literally like, but at the time it was hard. The first couple of times I really struggled to get to my toes. Like, where are they? Where are your toes right now, right? And then we moved to the second toe and then we moved to the third toe. And then the first couple of times at the third toe, I don't know what happened after that, I was gone. And then I would hear him say something about the knees and I'd be like, the knees, what? I, like I missed shit, right? I left, I left the body so much sensation in my toes that he wanted me to focus on. And my mind did what it does when sensation is overwhelming. It says, yo, remember that time we was at, <laughs> remember back when we did the, and so you just leave and you go to a memory that's safe. You go somewhere that's safe and familiar. You leave the body and go somewhere safe and familiar. Why is the body not safe and familiar? Why is this not where we stay? So I come back the next day. Fuck, got to get past this third toe, man. <laughs> I want to see the fourth toe. So you sit there and you breathe and you inhale and you listen to your teacher and they guide you and you get to the fourth toe and you're like excited. I got to the fourth toe, man. I'm so excited. Remember the last time we was excited? We went left again. <laughs> and it's, this kept happening. And then when I finally got to the point where I was in my ankles and my shins, I went for a jog and my toes lit up, all five of them on the jog. And not like 
a beautiful Christmas tree with soft lights, but like an electric storm. And here I am a mile and a half away from home and my toes are on fucking fire. Like I've never experienced anything like this before in my life. So I take off my shoes and I'm weird. So I get barefoot and start walking in the grass and trying to figure out like what's happening and I'm stretching. And maybe if I put my toes in the ocean, that will help and nothing helps. And for the next month and a half, my toes are on fire. This did not stop. I went through the meditation and it was like, I'd have breaks, but if I walked or moved around or meditated, boom, toes on fire, toes on fire. And so finally, like I called the teacher up, I was sent a message and then called him, sent a message and said, I don't know if I can continue. Um, first of all, I think I have peripheral nerve disease because that's what Dr. WebMD has told me. <laughs> and so it must be that, but this is weird. I didn't have it before this meditation. Do you think it found cancer? I mean, I, my brain just was like, it, it went over time, right? And since getting in sensation in the body. And we're just talking about the toes, man. Like, it's like, these are just my toes. I should... <laughs> I should have an idea about my toes. I, they shouldn't be so surprising. I shouldn't be being introduced to my own toes in my 40s. So weird. And then I started thinking, well, what are my toes trying to tell me? Like, should I cut something out? Start playing with my diet? Realizing when the toe, like there's this communication that happens. Sex is communication. There's a communication that happens when we pay attention to the body. Sex is an opportunity where we're supposed to be just paying attention to the body. Press one in the chat if you've ever had sex and paid attention to something other than your body. Right? Or just raise your hand, show me one. Right? How many of us have had sex and we're like, yeah, I'm about to go do this embodiment exercise. But while I'm doing it, I'm probably going to think about my taxes. That's the opposite of what we want from this practice. We want sex to be a place where we can say, I'm, I'm just gonna think about my body and feel good. I wanna have an embodied practice, but when it's all the weight is on the genitals, we put all the weight right here. It's really easy to leave the body. This is what my genitals look like. I'm not, I mean, not completely, but you know, close enough. It's my pussy puppet. So we want to take some of the pressure off of this. We want to move the energy of sex throughout the body. Do me a favor. We're going to move into another exercise. I would like for you to, you can either stand or stay seated, but if you're seated, if you can put your feet on the ground, and I want you to just shake your hands wildly. Just start shaking your hands. <sighs> Feel the sensation of your hands being shaken. Keep it going, keep it going. Don't stop, get it, get it. Um, and then start paying attention to the way that feels, the way energy feels, where is it moving to? And make that shape travel all the way down into your pelvis. So imagine, feel the vibration of that movement. Maybe you're shaking your arms a little wildly. Maybe your shoulders are also shaking and allow that to move into your pelvis. Allow the shape to travel throughout your body. Allow it to just spread out and then shake until you've shaken everything away from you. And then just come into stillness. Find a way to sit without moving at all, to stand or be without movement. External movement is, is no longer now. And then I want you to turn your attention into the center line of your body. So you gotta start at your taint, your perineum, the gooch, And you're gonna run up from that space between the genitals and the anus, all the way up the body in the middle, like a pole is running from that spot all the way up and shooting out the top of your head. 
just imagine what that space looks like now, what that pole looks like, and then feel your body relaxing around that pole. And on your next exhale, just let your hips kind of spread wide. Whatever you're sitting on, imagine that is holding your cheeks and then gently pulling apart while you relax into them. Let your hips be really, really heavy. Let your legs be heavy. Let your body open up to whatever is supporting you. And let your diaphragm soften and expand. And let your belly soften. Let all your organs smush your belly out, protrude your belly out on the inhale. Let it be nice and squishy for a little bit. And feel the sensation of your digestive tract as you inhale. Try and feel your guts. Feel their fullness or their emptiness. Untangle them in your mind. And then allow your heart to be softened. And your jaw to be softened. Clench the muscles of your mouth and your face. And then relax them. Let them soften completely. And then feel that energy moving up from the perineum to the top of the head. On the inhale, belly sticks out wide. Everything is soft. Everything is squishy. And find your center. Allow your spine to move in a slow wave when you inhale and exhale. Strengthening, lengthening, straightening. And then moving back into its rested space. And then I want you to imagine what your intention and sex in every part of your body that you're feeling as you inhale, feeling into your legs, to your fingers, your toes, your arms. Can you set the intention to keep sexual energy into those spaces? Backs of your knees, the creases of your elbows, the back of your neck. your waist, your spine, your shoulders. As I've called into these parts of the body, which parts are lighting up now at the idea of sex? How much of your body is aware of its sexual potential right now? Maybe there's a little flicker of energy. Focus on that. And if there's more, expand your focus. And then begin to connect from those spaces into the genitals, not the other way around. When I first learned about orgasms, I learned that they were these things that ended sex. That when we had an orgasm, sex was over. That's how we completed our sexual cycle. And that left me feeling incomplete a lot because I didn't have it all the time. I didn't have an orgasm every time I had sex. So I felt 
almost a trauma there in that space where something was supposed to happen, a gift was supposed to happen for me and it didn't. And so I had to unpack that. A lot of us need to unpack this idea of an orgasm being how sex is complete. A lot of us have to come to terms with the idea that we've never really experienced an orgasm. That what we've experienced has been what someone has told us was orgasmic for them. And it felt good, but it seems to put a ceiling on where the orgasm is. Ejaculatory responses are not orgasms. Rule number one. Um, they're cool squirting things out of the body is fun to watch it's a great circus trick good party trick depending on the party but it's and it has biological function right there's some biological function in in squirting fluids out of the body we know that babies can be made that way so there is a biological function an evolutionary function but orgasms are not evolutionary. They're bigger than that. Or maybe they are evolutionary, but they're bigger than, than this process of procreation. And they, they actually uh, scientifically can be triggered. Um, we, we recognize orgasm in the brain because it's been studied that way. And so we can see how the brain lights up from orgasm. And then we can also witness how it happens from other things. So there's actually a, a sacral chakra or sacral bundle of nerves that can be played with to trigger orgasm um, in, in medicine, if you're under, so to speak. Um, in fact, you can, it's believed, um, they've been working on it, but that you can actually trigger orgasm in a corpse. Um, that the orgasmic energy actually is not something that is uh, necessarily only belonging to the spirit, but also simply belonging to the whole body. And that these bundles of nerves, the same nerves that make someone sit up in the morgue after they've been long gone, um, that you can also trigger a touching of another nerve, a firing of another nerve, and that will trigger orgasm in the body. So it turns out that orgasm is not down there in the genitals after all. And we talked a little bit about the linear nature of sex and how we view sex on this linear pattern. But I wanna change that for you today. I want you to walk away with knowing that sex is actually a circular pattern. That we move energy up and then we move energy back down and then we move energy back up. But arousal doesn't start down there, it starts up here. So, if I'm understanding arousal and the power of really feeling arousal in the body and what that means, then a lot of it is going to bring some consciousness here and here, right? This is where we have this deep sense of knowing here in the Ajna, in Ajna, in the third eye. And so when we think about Ajna, um, we often, if you are familiar with the concept of the chakra system, um, that when we look at Ajna, which is a Sanskrit term for the inner eye, then we see that, um, we, we see the uh, pineal gland also. There's a lot of talk now about decalcifying the pineal gland and opening up the pineal gland, but the pineal gland and the pituitary gland um, which is important to know about. And if you get bored and want some good late night reading, Mary Roach writes about them both very, very proficiently. Uh, and she has a lot of really good books also about sex and the body. And but it's from a very nerdy perspective. It's fun though. Um, anyway, I digress. When you look at the, the two, the, the, the pituitary and the pineal gland, they work together for arousal. And so that starts here, it starts up here. We start developing the sense of arousal. And when we have this arousal begins and there's different types of arousals, but we're not gonna go into that. But when arousal begins to take place, hormones um, are released, chemicals are released into the body, right? And we say, all right, body, let's, uh, let's get ready to rumble, right? Let's send out some signals that we are aroused or easily arousable at this moment so that we can do that thing that we like to do. And so we send, um, our skin clears up. It's one of the best parts about it. 
So it's not like we're not talking about spontaneous arousal where you're like, bam, oh, something hit me. I'm turned on. Or like waking up with morning wood. We're talking about like the process of being aroused, how this looks. And it, I'm going to go through the real slow, slow motion version of it. But that doesn't mean that it has to happen as slowly as I'm describing it. So the, the sensation pops up, the body's like aware, skin starts to look a little brighter. Maybe, you know, um, you, you know, when you see somebody you're like, oh, it's what you're glowing. They might just be glowing for you in that moment. As the skin gets brighter, lips start to fill up, pupils start to dilate, cheeks start to become a little rosy. Right, as blood flows, start to increase the increase of blood flow in the body. So my face is here for sex. The rest of my body, all of us nipple humans, our nipples get engorged. Blood flows into them. Right, our fingers become less inflamed. There's more dexterity that's available to you as you begin to move into the space. Pain subsides because as inflammation starts to move out of the body, pain starts to move out of the body. And, and the body has a way of regulating all of that and for this moment, for this act. It wants you to bust it wide. It needs your hips to loosen up and relax a little bit. So all of this starts to happen in the body. The body is calling for a sensual expression and attention. It's calling for all of those things that we talked about, acceptance, this exploration of the senses, playfulness. And then we go right to the genitals. We make a beeline. So we're gonna start, we're gonna re realize that this energy is flowing down. We're gonna incorporate the whole body into it. And when it hits, the genitals. When we get the energy and now we realize that arousal is there too, we'll involve that. Then we'll move energy back up the body and back up to the top and we'll let it continue to flow until we have decided that we've played enough, that we've had enough playfulness, that we've had enough um, witnessing, that we've witnessed enough. Not that we've squirted a fluid and there's the end. This is important to me because this is why, I, this is what I teach this. I teach this because I believe that there's some freedom on the other side of letting go of the idea that our genitals are at the center of our existence. As long as I'm centering my genitals in my existence, I can't help but be very concerned with your genitals, even though you've not offered them to me at all. This is a colonialist way to center myself and then look outward to make sure that everyone else is centering what I've centered. So when we decolonize our the body, we also have to decenter our genitals in that, deco in that decolonialization. We have to realize that what we all are experiencing or have the potential to experience is the beauty of our bodies in whole flow with each other. The genitals don't even have the possibility to be that playful by themselves. So how can I invite playfulness if I'm just focusing on that? With all of the messaging that we've gotten over the course of our lives, all the shame messaging that we've received over the course of our lives, there's not a whole lot of space for the uh, healing to take place there either, right? So much of what we know about our bodies is shrouded in shame and shrouded in guilt and like protective energy. Don't bring the body out. Don't dress like this. Something will happen to you, right? All of this that we, we it's, it's a lot of weight. But if I lie down with you, or if I stand with you naked and we dance and dance and rub on each other and dance, 
and transmute sexual energy while dancing and rubbing on each other. Skin to skin contact, smiling, dancing, playing, thinking about what we want to create and allowing our bodies to be completely free, allowing our minds to dance in that dance with us and to say where we wanna go next, to feel what feels good so that it becomes familiar. This is what I mean by divination. A lot of times when we think about divination, we think about how we're going to see into the future, right? We have, I have my tarot deck here. I got my, my real deck here though. This the, is this the real deck right here, yeah. <laughs> um, we, we look for these tools for, for divination. However, you can, your body is a tool. Your body is going to lean you into a space that feels good. And those are the bones that we're throwing. These very bones right here, I'm throwing in the direction that feels good. What is my future? What do I want? What do I want to do next? Where am I going from here? Am I supposed to be with this person or not? Should I take the job or not? All of that is me moving towards my pleasure. This feels good over here. The body's going to go there. You know where the body moves away from? All the stuff we want to glorify, all the pain and the suffering and the struggle. The body don't want that. The grind. Denisha, you talked about it earlier. The body don't want that. We start moving away from that and moving towards what feels good. Well, now we can start to understand why the body is so heavily policed. Why your sex is so heavily policed. Because what if you did just do what felt good? What if that was what happened? Well, what would happen next? If you truly started to know what felt good for you, what would happen? Could I sell you pleasure? No. I'm not, these commercials ain't gonna mean nothing. I used to work in marketing. I used to sell commercials. When I first got that job, I could not believe how much people were paying for commercials. I only took the job because it was commission. And I found out that's how many people were making over at that place. I said, well, let me go make some of this money. And I hated it because I hate commercials, but People pay a lot of money to tell you something that you should learn. There's a lot of money in it. Me making a commercial. Y'all know how much the, um, what was it? The Dos Equis man was making in the year. If you're ever bored, go Google. I forget what it was. Go Google what his yearly salary was or um, the progressive lady. When we're talking millionaires for a commercial or a 30 second spot. Well, if you know what your pleasure is, it's gonna be real hard for me to sell you the adults and keys by telling you that I'm the most interesting motherfucker on this planet. It's gonna be hard for me to do that because you won't care because you found your pleasure. So it's the only interesting and subjective, right? And that's what, that's, this is how we decolonize this, this space that we exist in. How we move into a space where we allow this whole thing to be a sex organ, to experience pleasure completely and fully in the whole body. And then realize that as we start moving towards our pleasure, as we start using our pleasure as our guide, as our compass, as our tool for divination, as we start reading our own body like a tarot card. This is the pendulum, right? And that shifts a lot of the way that we interact as a community, the way that we interact with our lovers, a way that we see relationships and relationship structures. We're visiting things like monogamy and polyamory and changing our idea of how we connect with each other. All of that is there underneath the skin. 
I want to pause and see if, if that makes sense to everybody and if there are any questions so far. Damn sure does to me. <laughs> Good. Any questions before we move on? No? All right, cool. I want to do another little exercise. Make sure I keep y'all with me. I talk in a, um, in a very yoga voice sometimes, and sometimes I see my students. They want to be here, but my voice is like, I, I lead trance meditation, so I'm designed to put you in a hypnosis. So I want to make sure I pull you back out of it really quickly. And I want to play um, a game with our toes. So if our big toe is our thumb, we're going to go middle finger on your toes. So I want you to go ahead and close your eyes, wiggle all five fingers and toes, all 10. You should have 10. If you don't have 10, wiggle all the ones you got. Um, and then, <laughs> and then I want you to let your feet rest and I want you to move the first toe, move the second toe and now stick the third toe up, lift it up, bring it up. Okay. If that's hard, it's okay. Wiggle them all again. And then just focus on one foot, pick one right foot, left foot, whichever one feels good for you. Jump to the third toe and wiggle it. Just a little bit. I want to see you wiggle it. Just keep trying to wiggle that third toe on whatever foot you picked. Don't move the other ones, just the third. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Keep trying. Maybe look down at it. Sometimes you got to look at it, but come on now, move. Not, the, not you. Oh, there it is, just a little bit. Got mine going. Okay. It's back. Yeah. Okay. Cool. How you doing over there? You got third toe going? Some trippy, right? Those are your fucking toes. <laughs> like that's your body. <laughs> so I want you to keep working on this. Not now, but forever, for the rest of your life. <laughs> this is a great way. I'm not even kidding you. This is you got it? All right. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll move it'll, the rest of move. Like, okay, wait a minute. This is one of my favorite date night games. Get butt naked, lie in bed and just stare at our toes. Weed helps. You want to do some weird shit with your lover or with a group of lovers all you climb into bed and just see, all right, who can move their toe the most, get to the third toe. Spend that much time with your body start understanding how little control you have of course we're all running from pleasure we can't even communicate fully to our third toe what but we can we can develop dexterity you see it on well you maybe you don't see it on youtube but you can go on youtube follow some foot fetish girls you'll see some strange things with the toes so we can do it we've just disconnected the body though has the capacity for it and I bring this up only because the toe is so accessible. It's something you can do fully clothed. You can play this game at a restaurant. You can do it wherever you want. You can make this a icebreaker in groups that you go to. It's a fun way to say, let's check in and realize how little we're communicating to the body, how easy it is for us to abandon ourselves and how important it is for us to come home, to come home to the body, to stop spending so much time out there. When we look at, at how we're viewing our body and how we're connecting with our body, we can look at it in two ways. As a collective, all craving liberation. And then as an individual, as an experience moving towards our own personal liberation. And that as we start doing this, like, I want my community to recognize and by my community, I'm talking to you. So you are part of my community now. We know each other. Um, I'm sitting here naked with you. We know who we are, right? So as we start to move into this space where we get to know our bodies, we can tell someone when something is wrong. We can tell someone when something is right. We can express what our needs are. We know we don't question ourselves. We give ourselves the benefit of the doubt because there is no doubt 
in your own body. The body knows. The body does not lie to you. The body doesn't give a fuck about your ego. It is what it is. It's here to be shared, to be enjoyed, and to be listened to. It's here for magic. It's the other thing. If I'm trying to make a magic trick happen, right? And I do it in just this small container of my genitals, there's some magic there. But if I expand that out into all of me, if the sensation of knowing is everywhere, then magic, which is way more than sleight of the eye, is much larger. It's everywhere also. So when I want to move towards creating, transmuting energy, um, and uh, Napoleon Hill writes about this and Think and Grow Rich, um, which many people don't know, but it's a tantra book that they're reading at B school. Um, and so when, when you talk about the transmutation of energy, one of this is a lot of the, the no fat community is born out of this also though. So there could be some extremes we can watch. I'm not a no fapper. It's not my thing. I fat before this class just so I can get my mind right. Like, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not in the school of no fap. I don't believe, I believe that my body wants to be loved and touched and I'm not going to take away from my genitals, but that energy that we, um, that we have that expands out from our body is how we really lean into understanding what we're creating. So in the same way that if you're getting ready to purchase a car, all of a sudden you see that car everywhere. Or if you've been looking for one, like, you know, I haven't seen the new, the new Jeep Wrangler with that little weird bed in the back. I really wanted one of those when I first saw it and I started looking at the prices and checking out models. And the next thing I knew, I saw every one of them on the car, on the road. Now, most people will probably not pay attention to them, but that's what happens, right? That's how we manifest things, knowingly and unknowingly. You just start seeing all the Priuses on the market, on the road, once you start driving one. Before then, they were just pet driving by or once you start working towards one. Um, that is just the eye, though. That's the eye and the mind working together. Again, a small organ. What if we get all these organs involved? And we actually start moving towards the thing that we're creating, the juiciness that we're manifesting. If my whole body is there and it's pulling me in that direction all the time, how much more powerful am I? How much more powerful are we as a collective moving towards liberation with our pleasure being the horse pulling the cart? This feels good, let's go here. I have yet to witness examples of harm stemming from a place of true pleasure. I'm not saying they don't exist, I'm saying I have yet to witness them. I'm not saying that sociopathy doesn't lead you to a misconstrued idea of pleasure saying that what the body wants, free of shame, free of guilt, free of harm, is pleasure. And when I realize that my whole body is a sex organ, then I realize that my body is not just physical. There's an ethereal body and an auric field that exists outside of me. And that's still my body too. I want my orgasm to expand out into that. I want my orgasm to be something that I don't just take for the granted for the moment. I want to carry it with me all day. So now I'm out here in this body full of orgasmic energy with not just my physical body, but my ethereal body, my auric field full of orgasmic energy. And I'm moving through life, connecting with other auric fields realizing now because i'm in deep in a, in a space of deep connection and understanding i feel my soul here in the body that spirit floating in my body like the tongue was in the beginning of the class i feel this moving towards things that it is attracted to things that it knows will feel good that won't cause harm that mean it will that mean it positivity 
we are no different than the rest of the animals on the earth. They all do the exact same thing. Sit still in a park and calm your um, breath down, calm your energy down and watch animals come around. It's just how we are, right? It's just the way it is. Um, who was with me when we were in the ocean floating? Was anybody here? No. We had a floating exercise here in the ocean and the, <laughs> the fish started swimming around us, just little fish. Like we were just, the, this beach is not a fish beach so much. So the big fish came and actually started hunting the little fish around us while we were standing there doing a floating breath work exercise. So we just calmed down enough and started feeling what felt good. And the fish were like, oh, it feels good over here. They might've been looking for a little safety too, but it felt safe where we were. That is the power of knowing your body, of being in your body and experiencing sex as, as a whole part of you, instead of fragmenting it. Now, when that's all of you, if your whole body is a sex tool, then who's gonna check you, boo? Who gets to say something about sex? Who gets to demonize you? How do you see your sex negatively? How do you allow yourself to witness it as something harmful or nasty or shameful when it's all of you, when you're walking, living, breathing, orgasmic material? How is there space for that as a community, as a lover? How does that work? How does that feel? For y'all. Questions. No? No questions? Okay, okay, okay. If you have a question and you don't want to ask it, you can DM me privately in the chat and I'll ask it out loud. No one will know but you and me. Um, so that's, that's the thick of it. I have one more exercise, but, but that's the thick of it. Um, I want to talk though, let's just let's bring it back to, um, to the good stuff, to the sexy shit. So I would like for you to leave with some tools other than just toe, toe games, um, to play with, with your lovers. And even if you're just using yourself as your lover. I want um, communication. Jean said that sex was a tool for communication, that sex is a way that we communicate. Oh, I see it. There is a question. Um, mm, okay, good. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, so I want to uh, come up with a way for you to work on communication communicating your body, which kind of feeds to this question that you're asking. How do you set boundaries and communicate needs while honoring? So we were, we were in alignment there while honoring and embodying pleasure. Um, that's a very good question. And it's kind of a catch 22, right? It's understanding the circular energy that you have in the body because the communication is coming from the body. So all the boundaries that I have set I have set based on what feels good. I'm safe there. So knowing what feels good is a practice that I embody in meditation where I sit and when I have a memory that pops up, this is one of the reasons why I beg to differ with some modern meditation styles. It's like, and when a thought comes, witness the thought then let it go. I'm not gonna let you go. I'm like, I like meditations and that's not, not negate, it's not a bad form of meditation. It's just not mine. Um, I can do that if I want to, but that's not the style that I teach. I go to places where we practice that. Instead, I wanna see what it feels like. Like here I am in my body. I'm practicing my breath. I'm getting grounded and settled into my meditation. I'm loving it, it feels good. And as I'm breathing, 
and trying to focus on my third toe, a thought shows up. And this thought has been, it didn't come out of nowhere. This is one of my thoughts, from my own brain, my own subconscious mind, maybe something that happened earlier, something that I want to happen in the future. In that moment, in that moment, I want to know what feels good about that thought. Does it feel good being in this thought at all? And then what feels good? What doesn't feel good? Here are some boundaries. What doesn't feel good is a boundary. Do not harm me. My body said, it don't like this. Now you can sit and examine why, but until you figure out the why, let that be a boundary. Let no more harm come in that door. Pause in that moment of thought and see what doesn't feel good or what didn't feel good about that memory, about that thing that you're thinking about and say, okay, until I unpack that, that has to be a boundary. Now you can spend more time hanging out there with it if you want. You can make your whole meditation about that one thought and just go down and down and down the rabbit hole. Or you can continue to slide there and, and receive more thoughts. But these are where our boundaries are. They come from the soma. Boundaries are here to protect you, but you must know what needs protecting for you. Sometimes we just set up boundaries based on what we think we're supposed to have as boundaries. Because somebody said in this Instagram um, um, image that these are the boundaries I should be setting and how I should be setting them. And so I'm rolling with that. And now I'm unfulfilled because these boundaries have nothing to do with my, my soma. My body has not said anything about these boundaries. In fact, I wanted that. I wanted to be spanked. And they said, don't let nobody hit you. So I'm confused, right? Like, don't listen to your body drop in and, and start crafting up your boundaries from them. Now, here's the thing about boundaries, because one of the things that we fear about setting our boundaries is our ability to communicate them. So a lot of times we'll just run away from the whole idea of setting boundaries. Take a water break. That whole idea of setting boundaries is coming, inciting some fear for us to communicate them. Because if I tell you about my body, you might leave me. And if you leave me deep down inside, I may begin to think that my body is not worthwhile. Deep down inside, I've now come to learn my body and I've shared it with you. And you say, Nope. And then I turn on myself and think, I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have listened. I knew I shouldn't have been disembodied. If I just did what everybody else was doing, I'd have you around. You wouldn't have left. If I could just be normal, right? And that's a very, could be, it could feel very extreme. It could feel very resonant though, right? Like that in different levels is what we end up doing. So we don't communicate our boundaries. So you have to start realizing that and trusting and knowing that in this orgasmic field, the same way those fish came to me in the water, the same way the chicken or the duck will come to you in the park, the same way the birds will come and sit around you as you start to feel good in your body. So will your people, so will your lovers, so will your friends, so will your family. There are some people who won't want to honor the boundaries that you've set. And that may hurt if you've grown to like them, but that's okay. You don't have to not love them. Sorry, the chickens are in my cilantro. I really want to get them. Hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> Chicken breaks we have to take over here in the country. <laughs> <laughs> back to class um <laughs> so you'll start to yeah you'll just have to um you have to move to grief sometimes right that the body gets to experience that and that too can be a part of sex is 
um, uh, Denisha said it was uh, stress relief. That's what grief is, right? So you get to experience grief here too. And that sometimes in setting and communicating boundaries that people will leave and we won't hold that against them because I want people to feel free. I can't wish for freedom and then try and hold on to somebody, not giving them the freedom to opt out of my boundaries. I have to let that go. <laughs> yeah, speaking of grief, I knew it was coming. So yeah, that's all my notes anyway. <laughs> so it's perfect. Um, that was a good way to, that was a good question and a good way to kind of, kind of, kind of put, bring it back full circle. Um, I know we have to wrap up. If there's any other quick question that I can answer, I will. Um, otherwise we can, uh, I don't know how we're going to do this, Imani. How, what do we do next? I mean, I, I think we can, um, thank you so much, everybody for being here. Thank you so much, Amina, for dropping all of these teachings, practicings, paradigms, considerations. Um, if anybody needs to leave, please feel free. We want to honor your time. Um, check us out at hoodhippieuniverse.com or at uh, check Amina out at atlantatantra.com. Is that right? ATLtantra.com. Yeah. ATLtantra.com. Come, come check us out. Decolonization for Dreamers. More of this, more and more and more of this. Um, and then if you want, Amina, you can take questions and we can hang out for a little bit longer. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm. I'm, I'm a little free, my Monday is free. So I'm just gonna go back to writing and playing with cards and shit. So if anybody, I know there weren't that many questions but if anybody has a question, thank you. Thank you all for coming and for sitting still for a minute and playing around with me and wiggling your toes and doing weird shit. Um, keep being weird, keep having fun with your body. Allow yourself to feel all the pleasure and joy that you can. It, there's a, you're, you're jam packed and suited for it. So, so go for it. Um, and then if there are any questions, oh yes. Um, thank you. Boom. That was easy. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. I guess there's no more questions. I guess that's the perfect timing then. This is how we wrap up. Uh, please do follow me on social media if you want. Um, I usually try to share. I'm, I'm also ATL Tantra. I try to keep the same situation across the board so if you put an atl tantra in most places that's where you'll find me and uh yeah <laughs> good i like that yeah keep setting boundaries um i will leave with this one little nugget of goodness prentice hemp hill says boundaries are the distance that you and i can love each other simultaneously and so and i may be saying that a little off but um paraphrasing it just remember that boundaries don't mean that you that it's not love. It's all love. So, so remember that. Allow people to love you from where they can. All right, that's freedom. That's what we're here for. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming out and spending some time. And I'll see y'all friendly faces at the next one, the next decolonization. Please do, if I know a lot of you came over from my membership side. So also pay attention to what. Um, what uh this the whole program the decolonization for dreamers it's a year-long loop um amani can you just speak a little bit more real quick about that for the folks that are still here mm -hmm. <clears throat> to get one of you. yeah so this is a year-long training and we start our first trimester we break it down into three trimesters four months at a time um at the beginning of may and it's a sliding scale. We try to make it accessible. We try to have an anti-capitalist model as well as exchange base open if you need it. Um, come check us out for more free offerings for the rest of this moon cycle until the next, at least it'll go a little bit past the next full moon. So the end of April, April 26th. Um, we have another teaching on Sunday with Jaham McDonald. If you check us out on the website, you can see that um, guided visualization meditation for trauma um, survivors. 
and um, a special podcast on access where we'll be talking about uh, disability justice and access with Diana Gadalahi next Monday. And we have an ancestral somatic session, which we do three Thursdays a month. We kind of ground in between the teachings with our guests and synthesize what we learned. So we'll be kind of unpacking some of what we learned here in our next ancestral somatics, which is the Thursday after this one. Tavi, you know that date? No. Coming up soon. I think it's the 24th or something like that. Check, check us out on hoodhippieuniverse.com or the Eat Online space. If you join us there, that's where all the calendar stuff is. That's where all that is. 22nd, thank you. Yeah, I think you're right. And Amina, do you have anything coming up next that you want to send folks to? Mm, well, I do have um, one thing. One is I forgot I pulled a card before this as the Eight of Wands, which mm. for, is for sudden movement and change. Um, um, and uh, this Eight of Wands strikes like lightning. It's a card of news, change, or clarity in an unresolved situation. You might hear from an old friend out of the blue or receive some surprising news that shifts the direction of your course. This card sometimes means literal movement is on the horizon. So be ready to travel if the opportunity arises. Um, and we are traveling, we are going to Costa Rica. So if you are a wanna be a member, you're um, interested in more of my teachings, feel free to find us on Patreon, also patreon.com forward slash ATL Tantra. And if you're interested in, um, in traveling in a way that is, um, that invites us back to be in community with each other um, safely, reach out to me and I'll tell you more about how we're doing that in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so feel free to um, reach out to me. We'll be in Costa Rica. I'm actually relocating down there. So we'll be retreating in Costa Rica in October. Um, and I offer some personal retreats while I'm there too as well. So yeah, that's it. That's all. Yay. 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 All right, y'all, we did it. Thank you. Hey, blessed journeys and travel. Hope to travel with y'all over this year. Thank you so much, Amina. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amina. You're welcome. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy those bodies, y'all. <laughs> Do we stay on to wrap up? Yeah. Get on, Amy. Ready to bounce. Good. Yeah. Thank you so cool. much. That was amazing. That was really yeah. cool. All right. Right on. Thank you. See y'all later. Peace. Thank you. Okay. We'll be in touch.